All right, well, there's a huge update out for RimWorld, and I asked you guys if I should start fresh or if I should continue my last series. 60% of you guys wanted me to start fresh, and I love the comments. Why are you P-Brains voting him to repeat in another unfinished series? And then I like this bait. No point in voting, continue, since you're going to start fresh. Okay, yeah. Why in the hell did everyone choose fresh start? I genuinely was looking forward to doing an episode 5 of the last series, so I was going to do that if you guys voted for it. However, there's nothing like a fresh start in RimWorld. We're going to be completely randoming our colonists. As far as start, we're gonna be starting as a lost tribe which it says it's difficult and the rich explorer is extra difficult but i feel like the rich explorer scenario is actually easier than the tribe because with the tribe you start out with very little tech and with the rich explorer you start out with tons of tech so yeah i feel like lost tribe should be the second most difficult scenario or maybe even the most difficult because at least with naked brutality you don't get rated at the start and you start with decent amount of tech there's new difficulty now losing is fun the setting is designed to be unfair huge threats will crash upon you without mercy until your colony dies i think this is basically basically just merciless unless they added another difficulty level to the game which actually would be kind of fun. We'll be playing on this one though and our storyteller is going to be Randy Random and our seed name is going to be Stellaris I guess it was the random one we were given. Globe coverage is going to be 50% and population is going to be crowded. I like there being a lot of colonies on the map so we can trade and I think it makes the game more interesting. Since we're playing as a tribal people I like the idea of starting near these tribal colonies as for example if we attack Blue Plateau and we take some prisoners there they're more likely to join us because we're also tribal people. People. I've also never played in a tropical rainforest, so I feel like this could be a cool change of pace. To give us some defensive terrain to work with, we're going to start on this large hill tile. Alright, so here's what we're given. We got eight colonists over here, and we can choose five of them. Out of all of them, we're definitely going to want to dump off Cheetah, because Cheetah has a bad back. Minus 30% movement and 10% manipulation. That's pretty bad. Green also doesn't seem all that good. She's got 10 cooking, which is the most out of everyone, with a minor passion for it. However, Takamaku has a burning passion for it with seven cooking, three less, but he's going to learn it quicker. Takamaku Takamaku has also got a burning passion for plants with 10 in it, a minor passion for mining with 11 in it, and 8 construction. And okay, Banborbe is frail. That's even worse than a bad back. Minus 30% movement, minus 30% manipulation. Yeah, we're gonna ban Banborbe. The three people we're leaving behind is Cheetah with his bad back, Banborbe who's frail, and then Green the hearth tender who's really only super exceptional at cooking. The people we're bringing along is Frog who's trigger happy, which is awesome. It's the best shooting trait. However, he is jealous so we're gonna have to give him the best bedroom. Side note, I didn't notice this till I was editing, but Jealous is actually buffed with a mod we have, and it buffs some of the negative traits. Now, this is actually perfect for a frog. He's got nine in social with a burning passion for it, and this is gonna improve the trade price that we get from other colonies. A burning passion for art too, so when he's just chilling around the base, we'll have him make art. Assuming there's no prisoners that need talking to, or there's nothing that needs shooting. Takamaki already went over him, he's good at plants, cooking, and mining. And also, he is sanguine, by the way, which is one of the best traits in the game he gets a permanent mood effect of 12 the only negative is that he has a creepy breathing trait which i think does bother other people we got eokroy who's not really exceptionally amazing at anything although he does have eight in intellectual which is decent eight in plants and seven in crafting with minor passions for all those and i don't know if that's gonna be our best crafter i think it is our best researcher though he's kind so he can brighten other people's days and he is unfortunately ugly but to make up for it he does work slightly quicker we got a beeble who's decent at construction and plants and she has a great memory Memory, so she learns slightly quicker. She's also our best medic unfortunately with five medical that's not that high. That might be kind of a problem because in rainforest you get more diseases. Finally we got Weasel which by the way I haven't looked at their relations but apparently Weasel had relations with Cheetah who we're leaving behind. I don't know if he's gonna like that. I also just realized we're only bringing one female who apparently is a lover of Eokroy so I think they're gonna be able to sleep together. That's actually gonna be really nice at the start. But yeah Weasel is apparently really good at art but we already have Frog who's good at art. So I don't really know if we need him too much, although he's good at melee, so I guess we'll just use him as like a meat shield. If he dies, then oh well, I guess. He's also abrasive, so that can piss people off a lot, although it does make him have more melee skill. He has seven melee now. All right, so with the tribal start, we start out with three random animals. We got a top here, and oh wait, that's not a part of our colony. We got pretty useless animals. We got this pug, we got a Somali cat, and we got a beagle. <laughs> Okay. Well, in the new mod, when you do butcher animals, you get more meat. So if we are running out of meat, they're going to be the first ones to go. Or I guess they're not completely useless. Minerva the Beagle is bonded to Takamu, and that gives him five bonus mood. Check the Pug is also bonded to a Beagle, which gives her five bonus mood. Here's what we're looking at for the map. We got a few places that actually would make for a good base. Mainly over here at this huge area of rich soil. This would make for some really good farmland. The only issue is down here to the southeast, there is a insect hive, and there's a mega spider 
with some mega scarabs down here. It is dormant, so apparently it's not reproducing, and maybe we can just wall this off and not have to deal with it. In our starting area, we got this top here, and we're gonna have frogs start shooting at it, and it might actually charge us if he hits it. We do have some pemmican as food, but that's not gonna last us that long, so we need to start cooking up some actual meat. And there's a tiger over here. That's a bit scary. I think those things can turn into predator mode and start attacking our colonists. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to take that thing down. I already checked its speed, and it's quicker than colonists, so we're gonna have to definitely take that thing out as a group and with only three shots actually we killed the top here to the east of our farm area we got some runes already pre-built for us we just gotta wall them in and add a few doors and we can use this as our base at least for now while everyone's building that up we just got frog on auto hunt and we're gonna have them hunt some more of these tapirs i think we can also turn them into leather and we can either sell the leather or turn it into clothing or we can make bedrolls out of it that's probably what we'll do with our first few tapirs that we kill just so we can maybe send someone out on an early trading mission also having frog on auto hunt even if it's like some of the more crappy animals is gonna allow him to level up his shooting skill quicker and since he's trigger happy he requires less aiming time so he's gonna be shooting more and that's gonna level up his shooting skill quicker holy crap why is weasel hunting the alligator I accidentally had weasel on melee hunting mode but thankfully he did not get tagged by this alligator which is actually really tanky but we did kill it and that's gonna provide a lot of meat one thing I just realized is we can't actually make real beds we're gonna have to hunt animals and a lot of them so we can turn their skins and feathers into bedrolls just so we can have basic beds to sleep on around camp and okay this is actually not good this cassowary went into revenge mode and is now attacking takamu who by the way is really slow he's got a really bad leg and he's kind of outrunning this cassowary yeah he's outrunning it just barely and there we go frog killed it Takamu does have a scratch on his leg and his foot. Crap, and okay, that's not good. This cassowary revenge and is attacking Weasel and is just completely shredding him. Weasel does have a decent melee skill though, so we're gonna have him attack the cassowary, and yeah, he was able to tag it like just pretty much instantly. We'll have Frog also melee attack this thing. And we were able to kill it. Weasel got hurt really bad. He's gonna bleed out in eight hours, actually. With the tribal start, we did start with 20 herbal medicine, and we'll use a pretty good amount of that on Weasel to heal up his injuries. There's a pretty good chance they do get infected, though, because he just has so many. But it's not a really big deal. Weasel is not very useful around camp. The main thing is we need Takamu, even though he does not walk very quick. He's really good at planting and mining and cooking as well, and construction. Like, this dude is carrying the team right now. Luckily, he did only get a couple scratches, so he should be fine. Fine. I doubt he's gonna get any type of infection. And okay, we're getting raided already by two people with guns. We're not even on day two yet, and we're already getting raided. And these guys actually seem like they mean business. What are they shooting at? Oh, they're setting fire to our smoke leaf fields. We can't have that. We got everyone in kind of a short range, and we're just gonna yeah charge Dolores, who's setting fire to our smoke leaf. We're gonna have Weasel actually charge and tank as well. And Weasel Weasel's down. Gokroy needs to charge Indy, I guess. Go to melee mode. Just melee attack that guy. And everyone just yeah, surround Indy. As long as we get him as long as we get in a melee mode of this guy, then he can't use his gun. And Eokroy actually is hurt pretty bad. His HP is low. But it looks like we did end up killing Indy and we also killed Dolores. Unfortunately we didn't knock either of them out. Lokori's HP is low, but he just has a bunch of bruises. He's got 20 hours to live. Frog's got 21. Weasel is also low HP, but he's got 19 hours. Not really any super bad wounds there. Everyone should definitely survive. One good thing about getting raided, at least till the bodies start rotting, is we can have our animals use them as a food supply. We've trapped our animals in this really small room with the raiders, and they've already bitten off both their heads. Yes, this may do permanent damage to our animal's temperament, but at least we don't have to feed them for now. And like, yeah, this beagle is going to town on Dolores. And so is the pug. Another good thing we picked up from the raiders was a couple auto pistols. This one's actually good, and that gives it quite a bit more accuracy in close and short range than the poor one. It's pretty important to get a decent modifier on a range weapon, as accuracy is everything with range weapons. But yeah, we're gonna be able to use this to hunt now, and at close range, it's usually pretty good. Frog's just kind of getting unlucky here, and yeah, once he gets really close, then there's a much higher chance to hit. It's not that bad that he's not really hitting a lot of shots, though, because he's getting shooting skill every time he shoots, and this thing shoots quite quickly. We got a couple negative events going on. We got a heat wave, which isn't too bad for us. No one even has really any heat stroke yet, but Lil Croy actually got malaria, 
and Abibil is tending it right now. And she got a 52% 10, that's pretty good. I think he should definitely survive this. We do need to get him on an actual bed though that will help him get over it quicker. And actually we did end up researching complex furniture and we got some bedrooms over here. We just aren't using them because of the heat wave. It's too hard to cool these rooms right now because we don't have ventilation researched yet and we can't build any type of venting system. So we're just having everyone sleep in our main room for now. It's a barrack and people don't like sleeping in a barrack. Although it's a slightly impressive one so it's not too bad. We got our first quest, the Fleeing Duchess, who is being chased by a manhunting beagle. The first quest is always really easy to do, and now we gotta decide who we wanna accept the quest with. The person we're gonna accept the quest with is Takamu, who does not wanna do shooting or melee, as once he gets higher titles, eventually we're gonna need to get him some royal clothing, and that stuff's really bad in combat, so we're not gonna wanna have anybody that's doing combat take these titles. For the quest, we have to protect this guy, Pus Nikde. This guy's a bunch of abilities, one of them being Manhunter Pulse. We're gonna use that on half this herd of rhinos and this tiger. And okay, so four rhinos and the tiger went into manhunter mode, which ordinarily would be a bad thing, except for we do have this trader over here. Or I don't know if they're a trader, they're a visitor, I guess. They're gonna be able to take on this herd for us, hopefully. Or they'll get killed and they'll drop their equipment. So either way, it's a win win for us. And okay, Hoenn actually got killed. Chili actually got killed as well. And so yeah, they managed to take out three rhinos. This one's actually bleeding to the point where it's gonna bleed out in six hours. And they also took out this tiger as well. So that's gonna be a lot of meat and leather that we're gonna get. We could actually try to finish off the rest of the rhino herd actually while we're at it. We can help these guys out and use burden on these rhinos and that actually slows them down a bit. And okay, Gus actually got killed. We lost more relation with them. Delilah got killed as well. We're down to negative 23 with Northeast Omitithian, which I don't know if that's all that bad of a thing. And Chaos got killed as well. <laughs> Alrighty, well, most of them ended up getting killed. We can finish off the rest of these rhinos though. Sudnik did slow this one down, and that ability is super useful when hunting these rhinos. It only lasts for... I want to say like 15, 20 seconds, but we can drop it on him again. And doesn't actually cost that much heat for Sudnik. Oh, nice. We just took out that Rhino. And also Vertigo Pulse is a decent ability too. It'll make the Rhino, I think, start puking randomly. Yeah, it's just going to start puking and it's not going to be moving for a bit. It's an AoE ability too. But yeah, there goes the other Rhino. Pus Nikde, actually her name is. I don't know how I pronounced it earlier. Shuttle actually showed up and we're going to let her out because yeah, her mood was terrible. We're going to send her back to wherever she came from and yeah we got the quest done. Takamaku got two titles from that. We're gonna Takamu use this Psylink Neurofarmer to learn this ability Pain Block. That's not a great ability as it doesn't actually block damage it just makes people think they're not injured and so they won't go into Pain Shock which what will happen is I guess they'll probably just keep going until they get killed. This actually might not be the most terrible ability as Takamu has a painful scar on his leg and that always gives him serious pain. I wonder if he can Pain Block that out. And yeah actually he has no pain right now and that lasts for 120 seconds well it's not like a super long duration but it's got i guess a non-combat use so that's kind of cool over here we got our animals back in the corpse cage where they are happily chewing on these corpses until they do spoil to the right we got takamu cooking up some of this meat and rice and we're turning it into pemmican we got a lot of meat down here and a lot of it's going to go bad pretty quickly 1.2 days is going to spoil it would be nice to trade this meat off to the nearby faction of kamia tar pit but it's going to take us one and a half days to get up there and the meat's going to go bad before we can even get there we're going to try to cook as much of this meat into pemmican as we can though as pemmican does not go bad and we could also turn a lot of into kibble which maybe that's what we should do right now i think kibble cooks a lot quicker this is actually amazing luck so a bulk goods trader just came to visit us and they're gonna buy all of our rhino meat for one silver a pop and they actually will buy our pemmican as well but we don't need to sell them that we also have some tiger meat as well we can sell them and that's not even all the meat we have we still have a couple more animals to butcher up which are actually gonna spoil very soon we gotta butcher those up fast and actually i kind of messed up there if we have frog do the trading we can get a better price even we butchered up 279 more rhino meat we're gonna sell them that and this monkey meat as well and okay we bushed up the last rhino for 334 meats we got some pork some more alpaca meat too and they actually don't even have enough silver to buy all this stuff i wonder if we can buy any of their goods they do have quite a bit of cloth we could buy for 215 a pop we could sell them some of this musk ox wool we got from a cargo drop it's really good at insulating against cold 70 degrees protection against the cold but not so much against the heat so yeah, this doesn't really help us too much we're kind of in a hotter climate we'll sell that off and can we buy all their cloth yeah we can actually buy all their cloth and we don't even need to sell them all of our musk ox wool we only need to sell 18 of it and that'll be an even trade we also had an event where a couple of thrombos actually enter a territory and 
Okay, yeah, we actually just pissed one of them off only, I think, here. Oh, frog, run. Run, frog. Oh, we got tagged pretty hard. He got scratched twice by the Thrumbo, and he's actually going to bleed out in 12 hours. The rest of these guys are taking it, though, and they might actually be able to take it down. I actually kind of hope they don't get killed here either, because these are our nearby trading partners. We don't want them to be mad at us. And yeah, they got it down. This Thrumbo went into pain shock. There's one more Thrumbo over here that, yeah, okay, it's really easy to tag. Weasel tagged it, and he's trying to run, but oh, I don't know if he's going to be able to make it out. Is he good? Yeah, I think he's good. Okay, Weasel made it out. He got tagged once and has a stab to his shoulder, but he's fine. These guys are going to take on this other Thrumbo for us, hopefully. And hopefully none of them actually get killed. Somebody actually put some dirt in the Thrumbo's eye, like kicked up some dirt or something. And I don't think it's very accurate on its hits. And yeah, they knocked this one out too. So Frog actually just got inspired creativity, and if we have him make art, it's going to be a really high quality, two levels higher than what it would have been. As he does have 10 skill, it could even be legendary. Ideally, we have him make a sculpture out of the best materials we have, and we do have some of this gold ore that we could potentially make a sculpture out of, although I don't know if we're going to have enough. I think we need 500 of it, and it looks like we're only getting 33 from one node. So yeah, I'm guessing this is not going to be enough. I think the next best thing to make a sculpture out of is this jade, as it's got 2.5 times beauty and we're not gonna need 500 of it to make a sculpture although if we get enough we could make a medium sculpture which would sell for a lot more or a large sculpture rather it requires 100 jade and yeah we're gonna get 100 here all right so with 100 of the jade we mined out we had frog make this jade large sculpture <sighs> And, oh, nice. He made a masterwork one. If we want, we can trade it off. It's got a market value of 1600, but its beauty is 1300. And what I'm thinking is we're just going to install this in our main rec room slash dining room area. And people can just look at this while they're wandering around the base and while they're eating and stuff. And that's going to boost their beauty by quite a lot. And yeah, this is actually amazing. So Eokroy, who's our researcher, has this buff gorgeous environment for 15 bonus mood. His beauty bar is full and his mood is almost full. And the thing about having full mood is people People get inspirations a lot more often like the crafting inspiration we just got we also get this buff slightly impressive dining room which is weird because if this room is considered the dining room it should be extremely impressive like that's what it says it's extremely impressive and that's what it says for the rec room buff too if they do play pool in this rec room which by the way we built this pool table out of some of the cloth we got earlier from the trader if they do any recreational activities in this room which they're always pretty much going to do they're going to get this buff as well extremely impressive rec room for six bonus mood another thing that's doing a really good job of just boosting their mood maybe they changed it so you need to have a separate dining room and rec room I'm not exactly sure so we're on day 17.5 and we have not been raided since day two but here we are with a pretty lackluster raid lou over here has has a melee weapon and Griffith also does. They're pretty crap melee weapons and oh nice we knocked out Griffith and apparently they're all fleeing. There was four of them but I guess the other two are not even gonna try to enter our defense. Basically we have kind of a maze thing set up here and there's embrasures here which people can shoot through. Griffith actually is really solid. He's a quick sleeper so he doesn't need to sleep much. He's iron willed so it's really hard for him to have a mental breakdown. He's also decent at social so we could send him out on trading missions if we want to and he's pretty okay at intellectual so we could have him be our second researcher if he does end up joining us or i guess griffith is actually a she and she does not like alcohol or recreational drugs which is completely fine and you know evidently they were not all done with this raid karen is apparently still attacking us only one of them fleed she was attacking from a different side so i'm guessing that's why she decided not to flee but yeah maybe we could knock karen out too she might be a nice addition to our nope Never mind, she's dead. Griffith is a part of the assassins and I'm guessing they're not tribal because she has quite a bit of resist, 27, with an 83% recruitment difficulty. So yeah, it's gonna take quite a while before she'll join us. And while she is prisoner, we will have an extra mouth to feed. So we're gonna have to decide like, is it worth it to keep her around or would we wanna sell her off as a slave? All right, so it's getting kind of late and I wanna try to get these episodes out daily. I'm gonna do a little base overview. So to the bottom left down here, we have our crop fields and then we got it walled in. And raiders should not attack from this side unless they're sappers, which sappers will attack from any side they want to but as long as there's a way to get into the base the raiders will attack from this main choke point we have over here on the right and basically just gonna have to go through this maze and we got embrasures that we can shoot through while they try to go through it they can shoot at us but they're less accurate unless they're right up next to the embrasure then they're really accurate next to griffith's prisoner room we got kind of our loot vault with all of our leathers and we also got a bunch of pemmican just in case we run out of food we have two builder quests where we have to build monuments the thing that's cool about these quests is we get the reward right after it's built but after 
building the monument, we have to protect them for this one's 32 days and then this one's 15 days. And if we don't protect them, there's consequences like we'll get a mech cluster with a lot of stuff that we do not want to deal with. Or in this one, we'll lose relation with the Empire of Rodeo though. But yeah, with the new quest system, we have different rewards we can choose from. The dangerous construction is going to give us a power claw, which is actually kind of cool. It's a replacement for a hand and it does really good melee damage, although it slows whoever is using it by 8%. Or we can take this reward, Glitter World Medicine times 9. I think we're going to take that simply because Glitter World Medicine is the best medicine in the game. And if we get any really bad diseases, we can use this and they won't die. The other monument quest, the extensive edifice, is going to give us either a side trainer burden, which I showed you guys earlier. It slows whoever we target with the ability. I really like that ability actually. The other rewards are this Athenium, which is like a magic crystal that we can use for some late game equipment, I believe, and some silver. Or we can do like this Hyperweave, which is a material that we can make into really decent armor. But we don't really have anyone that's got really good crafting yet, so we don't really care too much about crafting materials. We're definitely going to go for the side trainer. And we'll be doing those quests at the start of the next episode. With that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you then.